All right, what's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me for another edition of Versus, uh, just a health and fitness edition of comparing three uh, very closely related subjects and, and topics within that as far as just compare and contrasting. And, and as we've kind of found is I've really geared more towards, you know, uh, myths, debunking myths, the, the common conception uh, versus what's actually true. So with that being said, you've probably joined me for a few, so you know what's coming. We're going to blast right through these today. Um, full disclaimer that I kind of put out at the beginning. Uh, once again, you know, if you have any more questions or more in-depth um, concerns, comments about these specific subjects or topics, please feel free to reach out to me and I can maybe answer the questions as they specifically um, relate to you and your specific situation and maybe help you out um, in exactly what's going on. All right, so let's hop right into it. Uh, the first one is kind of our general nutrition subject. So and as you can see, it, it's kind of tough for me to verbally present these, but I'll do my best. And, and this is kind of one of those common myths of, you know, they read it in a magazine or a newspaper or something, or someone told it to them of, you know, don't eat carbs or don't eat something after 6 p.m. It'll, it'll, go, it'll go straight to this or that or whatever it is. I'm here to tell you that that is a complete myth. Whatever you eat, okay, it does not know what time of day it is. It does not know. It just doesn't know what time it is. Calories in is calories in. Calories out is calories out. There's no way to falsify them. There's no way um, to change that. Uh, whatever you eat is going in is going in. You, it, it can't bloat more because it's a certain time of day or vice versa. Now, if you, you know, I'll put it out there. I'm not a huge believer in intermittent fasting or fasting in any which, which method. Um, really not a fan for it. I, I could break that down at another point in time, but you know, if you are a believer in intermittent fasting and you've gotten results and results that have stuck with you for a long time, um, you know, so you therefore say, you know, you don't like to eat at during this specific time window or after a certain time or before a certain time, you know, if that's a method that you use, that you've seen results, uh, that you still feel good, still have good energy levels and see results from, uh, once again, results, um, then yeah, all right, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and steer you away from that. You know, if you found results from a certain eating pattern, then stick with it. Um, but I always just tell people, you know, um, it doesn't matter what time it is. If you track your calories and you are burning more calories and not just, you know, 10 more calories, but if you're burning about 700, 500 to 700 calories more uh, than you're eating, intaking, you're going to lose weight, okay? Because 3,500 calories is one pound. So if you do 500 calories seven days a week, that's 3,500 calories, right? So that's a pound. So if you are just eating five to 700 calories less than you're burning, then you're going to lose a pound a week, which is a very healthy, uh, very sustainable method. Right? It doesn't matter if you had all those calories at six o'clock at night or you had them all at six o'clock in the morning. It, it doesn't matter. Okay. So I feel like that's enough uh, out of that one. Uh, but once again, if you would like to maybe set up something specific to you, uh, maybe you have seen really good results with this. All right. Well, then well, let's take a look at it. Let's see maybe another way that we can make it actually a little bit healthier uh, and get you food, which is also known as energy throughout the entire day as opposed to starving your body at certain times of day. All right, on to the next one. So this is my just general health wellness um, topic. And it is preparing versus failing, okay? Because of course, everyone's probably heard that saying of failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Okay, so this, this kind of you know, encompasses everything, whether it's nutrition, whether it's exercise, whether it's well-being, uh, anything. It, it, you know, you need to prepare. So let's break them down all real quick. You know, as far as nutrition, whether you're trying to gain weight, you're trying to lose fat, okay, you need to prepare by, you know, pre-counting out. And this sounds like a lot of work, and it might be at the beginning, but once it becomes a habit, it becomes very easy, it becomes very quick. You need to prepare your meals throughout the week. Maybe it's every single meal, Monday through Friday. Maybe it's only your lunches. Maybe it's only your dinners. But then you can measure everything out. Okay, you can prepare all your foods. It's going to be time-saving throughout the week, okay? Uh, so, so whether it's actually a way to count your macros and calories, or it's just time saving throughout your work schedules that you can actually get a workout in or actually eat because a lack in 
eating, it's going to slow down your metabolism. You're actually going to gain weight quicker. So nutrition wise, you know, you know, meal prepping, huge thing, uh, a workout, preparing your workouts, uh, having a schedule set on Monday that you know what time you're going to work out, what type of exercise you're going to do, whether it's resistance training at the gym, you're going to go for a run, you're going to do a yoga class, you're going to do a virtual group class, you're going to do a virtual Tabata class, it's going to be a 20 minute one, it's going to be an hour one, uh, you're going to have lower body days on these days, upper body days here, you're going to do full body all week, okay, so you need to prepare, if you don't know if you're working out once or five times this week, then there's no way that you can prepare from day to day because you don't know what you're going to be doing, what I mean by that is if you're working out one or two times a week, you need to be hitting all body parts. Okay, if you're working out five, six times this week, you're going to break them apart. One day is going to be cardio. One day is going to be lower body. One day is going to be upper body. One day is going to be a high volume day. One day is going to be an isometric day and an isolation exercise day. When, you know, so there's, you need to prepare your workouts. Maybe the time of day is tough to predict based on work schedule or, or maybe even the weather or kid schedule. That part can, can be difficult, I understand that, but maybe there's a way that, that we can work together to figure out how that scheduling can match right into yours. We also have so many different platforms where uh, we have specific time schedules, whether half hour classes, hour classes. Also, the virtual world is on demand. You can do a class at 1 a.m. You can do a class at, at 10 a.m. You can do a class at 9 p.m. It doesn't matter because they're all just at your fingertips, which makes the preparing life so, so much easier in this way okay and, and kind of as i spoke about that it's kind of your same thing with, with well-being uh, as far as whether it's meditation yoga uh breathing and stretching exercise reading just going for a walk those things are going to clear your head okay plan those out maybe it's just waking up 10 to 5 minutes early monday monday wednesday friday so that you can read an extra chapter in your book uh whether it's for pleasure or for continuing education or if it's 10 extra minutes on two days to go for a nice walk. Um, five extra minutes to take maybe a little bit longer shower where you just kind of think back uh, and reconcile about different thoughts and, uh, you know, think through different things going on in your personal life, uh, in your work life. So it, prepare all of this is basically what we're getting at. Because if you don't prepare, you're setting yourself up for failure is really the point of this slide. Okay. Uh, next and last one is deadlifting versus not. Full disclaimer, if you have a severe chronic issue and you are advised by a medical doctor, and not even all oh, this is 100% true, then I am not exactly talking to you. But the amount of times that I've heard someone say that they can't deadlift because uh, you know it hurts their lower back or uh, they're afraid of it or this or that, the, the excuses could go on and on. Deadlifting correctly is better for your back than not deadlifting, okay? If deadlifting hurts your lower back or it hurts something, you're not doing it correctly, okay? Maybe it's you need some instruction on exactly how to deadlift. Maybe the word deadlifting just scares you. You, you think of these massive, massive guys uh, with you know thousands of pounds of, of weight on the bar and you've seen deadlifting fails on YouTube of people passing out or falling or plates falling off, okay? You got to get that out of your head, okay? Dead, deadlifting can be as simple as there's a regression to it. There's, there's regression to every exercise. You can be doing it with a five pound dumbbell, okay? It's a very slow motion. There's so many different regressions and progressions, just modifications to a deadlift that we can do. Maybe it's getting, you know, it, learning a new ex, uh, accessory exercise that's going to help with your deadlift. All right. I, I'll, I'll keep it kind of short and sweet right at that as far as deadlifting, but not deadlifting is probably going to do more harm to your lower back than actually deadlifting the proper modification that is specific to you. Okay. Uh, I, let me just take something back because I want to, uh, for some of you might not, not even be understanding what a deadlift is. Let me just, backtrack real quick okay uh, there's no exercise out there that's going to recruit more muscles throughout your entire body than a deadlift there is no other exercise out there that is going to improve your posture more than a deadlift a deadlift is teaching your body how to properly pick something off pick something up off the ground okay whether it's a laundry basket uh a trash can, a trash bag, uh, a kid's toy, 
uh, it, really anything that's on the floor, on the grass, on the ground that you need to pick up, there is a proper way to bend down and pick it up. Okay. So what we do is we teach your proper core muscles, your posterior chain, which is everything from your heels up to the back of your head, how to properly activate and how to properly stay in alignment so that the muscles are being used and not your spine. Okay. That's what a deadlift is. And if you do not know how to deadlift, you need to reach out to me or go to my YouTube channel and check out the exercise instruction for the different modifications that I have out there, such as a RDL, a sumo deadlift. Okay. So try those out um, and, and learn how to deadlift in any modification. I'm here to help you. Okay. You have me free at your disposal. All right. So that's my edition this week of versus comparing and contrasting uh, a few items within subjects in the health and fitness related field. Until next week, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay active above all. All right. Happy holidays.